Hello and welcome to VAD Inspires and if you struggle with anxiety and depression in this video I'm going to show you how to understand yourself and your anxiety through a simple worksheet and part of this is part of my strictly personal series and um, you might see that handle over on top of this video so go out and check out those series uh, it will give you a little more perspective on how to understand your anxiety and depression but onto this video the strictly personal part 18 I'm going to use this worksheet to demonstrate how you can start mapping out your anxiety and understanding yourself a little bit more and maybe find a breakthrough that you might be seeking. So let's get right into it. So first is the preamble, right? The preamble of understanding um, your anxiety. You know, um, this worksheet works best when you understand a little bit about yourself in terms of exploring your anxiety. So you can discover a common factor that always crops up in terms of, you know, what the anxiety that you, you might be suffering from. Uh, you might find a common theme of what you always feel, maybe a stress, maybe a trigger that is common to all the anxiety examples that you might explore uh, using this worksheet. And also is uh, don't forget to consider the internal sensations you might be feeling in terms of when you start going through this worksheet, you know, consider the, the you, you, your, your bodily sensations like your breathing, the dizziness, the pounding of your heart, the whole complete sensations that you can remember when using this worksheet, make sure to write it down in as much detail as you can. But don't get stuck in trying to think of those specific triggers and situations this works best when you are in the flow mode um don't be bothered if you don't have as much details for this worksheet just understand that you know these sensations are important because they are the emotional force driving your anxiety provoking situations and then lastly consider the sounds you hear and the things you see and all those things are much more important than you might have first previously thought or imagined them to be and now we get to the exercises themselves. So this is how you want to number this, right? So if you are in a position where you're not able to do this exercise now, you can just listen through, understand how you can do it, and then you can do it at a little time. But it's recommended, you know, as you're watching it, you're doing it. Because once you set aside, set aside time to do something, you usually never really get back to it, especially when something pertaining to your mental health, you, we tend to delay our mental health until it's too late. But anyway, let's get right right into it. Um, this is the a fourth section of the things to consider. Number one is a situation that causes your anxiety. And as you can see here, part of my own situation, I've listed here so that you can use that as you can use that as an example. But I don't feel these situations the same way that I used to feel them. But I wanted to use how I was feeling them at the time before I started this exercise in order to exemplify to you what I went through and how I am handling it in terms of using this exercise to bring attention and awareness to the answers pattern that I was going through. And number one is writing the situations that, that, that causes the anxiety for you. Um, as you can see here, the first one that I have is uh, approaching women. And the level of anxiety on a scale of one to a hundred, meaning one is minimal, 100 means it's intolerable for you. And you can see my own scale is 80. And then third is the frequency. How often does this happen? Mine happens mostly at social events, sometimes at the gym. Um, and then the triggers in the situation is walking inside the gym, seeing a lot of plethora of options, you know, staring back at you. And you want to approach one and then you are you 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 are attracted or, or sometimes you tend to overthink or start to, start to think of what to say what to do you know overthinking about the, the process you know how am i gonna say hi the rejection and all this stuff you know it tends to close me up put up a defense and then i justify my actions and then it happens all over again but putting it in this worksheet format has helped me to understand at least exactly what's going on and it, and that's what this worksheet will do for you to bring attention to what you might be doing automatically that might not have been serving you up to this point the next one is the job anxiety that one on a scale of 100 for me was an 85 
And when it comes to the things that triggers it the most, it's angry customers. Well, before that, it uh, happens two, two, twice or three times a day during my eight hour shift. Sometimes it happens even a little bit more than that. But you know, the angry customers, you know, um, time seems to slow down very often. You know, you're two hours in and you're wondering how am I gonna get through the next six hours? And maybe sometimes the stress starts to get you to ruminate about your future, maybe at the job or maybe in general as your life, maybe your career. Maybe you are like a, 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 a round object being tried, like being forced to fit in a square peg or, or a square peg being trying to fit in a round object, whichever way you want to think about it. But the intensity of the future varies depending on how stressed I am. The more stressed I am, the more I ruminate over the future. And sometimes the repetitiveness. Maybe you've done the job often, I've done the job often enough that the repetitiveness starts to bore me. And that's part of what makes me, you know, anxious about coming to work or the fear, the fear of rejection. Maybe you're doing a sales call or a sales presentation. I have that anxious feeling that crops up all the time. So mapping this out in this kind of format can start to help you to understand yourself a little bit more. This is for understanding because I'm big on understanding. I'm big on understanding it, what you are trying to fix. If at all, it needs to be fixed because I, I'm not the one to tell you, you have to get rid of this fear or that fear. You decide the kind of fear that might be interfering with your life the most and then map it out in this format and see if it brings more attention and awareness to it. Because sometimes, or most of the times, that's what we need, awareness, not in an automatic way, in a very detailed, specific way. The more details you give your brain, the more solutions it comes up with. And you'd be surprised with how much solution you can come up with once you start seeing your anxious pattern in this way of mapping it out, the situation that causes it, the level at which you feel um, the anxiety after the situation, and then the frequency, and then the triggers in the situation and map it out in as much details as you can, that will get you to understand a little bit more about yourself. Well, now that you've mapped out your anxious pattern using those situations, and I talked a little bit about what I'm going to talk about now on the previous video, which is considering, understanding, and prioritizing which fears to start working on, which anxious pattern to start working on. The first thing to consider is the instant to which this interferes with your life goal. So you wanna, you don't want to start fixing fears that you don't come in contact with as often, or it's not important to you in terms of your life goals. For example, someone who is afraid of uh, uh, airplanes and doesn't wanna fly, if his job or his situation doesn't require him to fly, there's no need starting with that fear. Start with much more appropriate fears like maybe if you work at a sales job or maybe you're a student who feels anxious about taking it down now this fear is important you might start with that fear specifically before moving on to the next one the next is the amount of distress they cause you which in a, a to say it another way the the frequency that we talked about and how intense does it come when it comes and then the last one is the frequency and that frequency comes up how often does it come how, what's the intensity of the distress that it causes you? And then how often does that occur? And then these three things should be your guidance in terms of deciding which anxious pattern to start working on first. And of course, some another important point to keep in mind is understanding that the intention is to make your goals, not your anxiety, the driving force of your life. Your goals is the driving force. That's your reason. Remember, you're motivated by reasons. You're motivated to act, to change, to explore, to implement, to um, practice, to, to practice because of a deep underlying burning desire. And you're gonna understand your goals and let that be your driving force. Because you're gonna experience some resistance when working with this tool, when working with this worksheet. And what's gonna make you persevere is your reasons not the anxiety is going to make you persevere and that should be the driving force you're not trying to get rid of random fears you're trying to get rid of something that is interfering with your ability to function normally on a day-to-day -day basis and of course as we as we uh, explained start with the situation that produces the most anxiety 
for example, if you have a postal career, a, 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 a courier who is afraid of dogs and you go to home to home delivery every morning as your job, you might want to start with that fear first because that's interfering with your daily functioning as a human being at your workplace. And then lastly, this is just to express to you the, impo the importance of feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Feeling the fear and understanding that for you to overcome, you have to undergo a little bit of stress. When you are mapping out this anxious pattern with the worksheet we discussed uh, earlier, you might feel anxious. You might start ruminating about those situations where working with this worksheet. Take a deep breath and stick with it. Take a deep breath and keep doing it because in exploring yourself, in understanding your anxious patterns is the answers to the solutions you've been seeking for. And bravery doesn't take you climbing up a mountain like you see this person jumping up here. Real bravery is fighting your immediate fears, no matter how small they are. The small victories in the dark when no one is watching, the small victories of you deciding to do the right thing, deciding to take a chance on yourself when no one is watching, those are the real braveries. Those are the things that count. And when you do those things, when you stick with it, that's when you get you, you can start to understand yourself a little bit more. Sticking with it, no matter how tough it, it can be. If you can walk slow, walk slow. If you can walk faster, walk faster. But stick with it to the end so that you can explore yourself and understand yourself a little bit more. And that will guide you towards the solutions that you might be searching for. Then, of course, subscribe, like, and share this video if you're getting a ton of value from it. Um, and as well, uh, if you want to understand more, a little bit more about your anxiety, I do have a relatable anxiety playlist from a, a, a relatable perspective that you can explore, or you can watch the short videos from my short section on my YouTube channel. And of course, this video is not sponsored but inspired by the book called rewire your anxious brain by uh, Catherine m pittman and elizabeth m curley uh some of the things that i learned in this book i'm applying in my life and i'm getting wonderful results and if you want to get the book get the book read it it's a great and valuable read and of course as always thanks for watching be great i'm full of more to stay inspired